Howdy folks. Uh, these are serious times. So tonight I'm going to read a deeply unserious piece because I think we all can use a little bit of that headspace. But I, I do feel like I have to say I read it with respect to all the people just hunkered and, and working the front lines of this thing. Uh, so this piece, there are two things about it that will be, I think, revealing. One is that it, it shows a side of me that I wish I didn't have, but I do. And then secondly, um, when you've been uh, holed up for quite a long time and you can't keep track of all your glasses, um, you're actually thankful that you and your mother-in-law wear the same magnification of readers. If I had any pride at all, this wouldn't be happening. <clears throat> all right, this is from Roughneck Grace. At last count, I owned seven tape measures. As with reading glasses, you can never find one when you need one. So I buy tape measures in bulk and scatter them everywhere. In order to... St I don't even drink. That's the funny thing. I don't drink. Never have. But still, sometimes words are hard. In order to stretch my tape measure budget, I draw a fine line between quality and economy. Once, while shopping for materials to build a modest hunting shack, I found myself in a well-known home improvement chain store staring at a hot pink tape measure. I like the idea of the pink tape measure, not because pink's my thing, but because I figured it'd be easy to find it if ever I misplaced it, which usually happens about five minutes into the project. I waffled a bit because the tape measure cost a buck ninety-five, and if you buy a 25-foot tape measure for under two bucks, you're buying junk and you know it. But then I thought, well, what the heck, because it's not like I need something top of the line, and as a matter of fact, with my limited carpenter skills, a high-end tape measure seems an over-optimistic investment. And so I bought the thing. The very first time I tried to use it, while measuring corner to corner to make sure the wall I was building was square, it wasn't. The tape was extended about eight feet when the tab slipped off the board and the blade retracted. Zwoop! It whipped around some at the end there, and because the blade was made of an unidentified metal one notch below tinfoil, the force of the retraction put a kink in it, the upshot being that the end of the blade curved up, and every time I hooked it over a board and tried to take a measurement, the end sprung loose and zwoop! rolled itself up. The third time this happened, I rose up to my tiptoes and hurled the thing straight down with all the fury I could muster. When it hit the floorboards, the tape measure exploded like a cheap tape measure. The hot pink shell split into two halves. One half flew out into an adjacent overgrown pasture. The other half bounded nearly straight up and landed on the roof of my father's woodshed. The tape, released from the confines of the case, uncoiled with explosive force, flinging itself every which way. I cannot lie, it was a most satisfying result. There are more acceptable ways to handle blind rage, but show me one that pays off with the same level of instant gratification. That's what you get for buying a buck ninety-five tape measure, I thought, and immediately felt the rage returning. Sure, my fault, but they knew that tape measure was a piece of junk when they put it on the shelf. It was fraudulent at any price. I couldn't find the one half that had bounced into the cow yard, but I got the other off the roof and wrapped the blade around it and a big wad and taped the whole works together into a shattered, twisted bundle and headed back to the store. When I got there, I went to the customer service counter and using my best, mm, I'm not going to read that because it's, let's just say I gave her an evil stare. I looked the nice young lady square in the eyes, held out the clustered remains and said, this broke. She looked at the water wreckage, then she looked back at me. Then she dug a buck ninety-five out of the till. I used the money to buy nails I couldn't hit. So if you're from around these parts, you'll notice I very carefully didn't say the name of the store. But people who really do know which store I was at, they always call me on that and they say, she didn't give you a buck ninety-five. She gave you a coupon good for a buck ninety-five in that very same store. See you later. Forward.